market update. Which market update? The only market update. I'm your host, Bill Noble. Can XRP, Chainlink, and Cardano, don't laugh, beat Bitcoin? And can altcoins do better than Bitcoin headed into the halving? That's right. Can the decline create a pause or doubt in Bitcoin and allow for a speculative rampage in altcoins? Don't believe me? I got the charts. Don't go anywhere. It's a combination of long-term price predictions and the roadmap, something the Spartans of my Patreon group are familiar with. Speaking of that, this show is brought to you by my Patreon group, patreon.com forward slash unhinged crypto, $15 a month for a membership and special reports available for $27 as an add-on. We just did long-term price predictions. We have this subtle QR code with arrows where you can sign up. Don't forget, comment down below if you've been watching the short videos and turn on alerts so you know when we're going live. Okay, you might be asking, so Bill, what's with the Sunday night stream? Well, because it can't wait till Monday. It just can't, right? Discount shopping was Saturday night. That was so ugly. Like I figured the low was Friday. And of course, in classic crypto fashion, they had to clean the house, make sure everybody was out, made sure I needed a different tint of sunglass to be able to look at the screen. I couldn't look. I couldn't look. And of course, that's the definition of a low, right? A correction is when you are panicking. A crash is when I was panicking and I looked at it and I was like, oh God. And then I realized how many times that happened in 2020 and 2021 and 2017. It's not the percentages that they that it gets taken down, although you know, meme coins were moving like Bitcoin and ETH back in the day, 30, 40, 60 percent clips. It's what it makes you feel like and what it looks like at the low. Definition of a low, no hope, the abyss, no buyers, nothing. And it was like that. I could feel this market holding its breath on Saturday night. Okay, well, that's over. They're more than happy to hit it again. I don't think they can. And even if they do, it's going to get bought. The altcoin space, okay? Think about it. What hasn't rampaged higher? What hasn't rampaged? Like just gone and gone and gone. Well, like I said, XRP, fast versions of money. Bitcoin Cash smoked higher. Don't see any reason why XRP can't. The cross-chain future, Solana, is a warning shot that it's Solana, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Avalanche, Phantom. The cross-chain world benefits Chainlink and nobody's bullish Cardano. Nobody, right? And then to this, I would add Ethereum. The Spartans in the Patreon group all got the revised Bitcoin and Ethereum roadmap. I, I can't even tell you about Ethereum. You're just going to have to get in there and, and take a look at the chart. It's unbelievable. Okay, let's welcome who is here. I think all the Spartans are in the house. Baby Whale, Dwilo, welcome. Okay, Bill with a lot of L's. Bull Runner is here. Hello, welcome to the show. Okay, the Raj, welcome. Baby Whale says the 20% dip is nothing. L5, DC Precise. Simone is E, Jennifer Diamond. What's up, Spartans? The Spartans are my nickname for the Patreon group. Loches, good evening. That would be Spartan number 300 to join the group, everybody. Rumor has it she paid some bills lately with some research and some trading of her own. Quiet Dawn, Rugby Performance Labs, Silver Freedom coming to us on Twitter. First to comment on most of my tweets, and I appreciate that. Rudy is here. Welcome, Rudy. Don't let me forget VRA. Don't let me forget. Okay, forget about it is here. Crypto Steph, 
Patriot Caveman, Travis, Micah, Flying Tiger, Kim Craig. Kimmy needs a new car. You know what? That's why I'm here. Let's get Kimmy a new car. New title for the show. Ashton, GF, Gravity, a satisfied customer. Spartans in Australia, Richard, Yuxel, Silas, Claude, what's up? Claude reminding you to hit the like button. That helps the stream and that helps me help you. Okay, Kim Craig is into Theta. I think I have a Theta long-term price prediction. I will get that in here somewhere. Trouble Maku says Solana from $16 to $200, not even in a year. Chase Wright, am I a Spartan? Yes, you are, sir. If you're on this stream or you're in the Patreon, you are a Spartan. Lotmo Crypto, Jorge, welcome. Paco, am I late? Paco, you're not too late. You're not too early. You're right on time. Frankie B coming to us on Twitter. Wells, what's up? Okay. You know what? And somebody says, fear got to me yesterday and I sold my position. Okay. Well, let's talk about that. Fear got you. Trust me. Fear got me. You know, I had to go for a walk around the block multiple times. I was like, did I lead my people astray? And then as, as I'm saying to myself, I'm like, I believe this is an appropriate time to fade yourself. Now, if you puked out your position, guess what? You have something in common with every big trader in human history, even the greatest. If you sold the low and bought the high, congratulations. They've all done it more than once. All done it. The best response, so what, now what? right? If you got out, you can come back in that coin or something else. Don't let a mistake. Like I didn't get it timed right. I got it timed by one day, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to let that get me. I'm not, I'm not going to listen to, do you know how many boomers are out there? Slight digression. Do you know how many OGs and boomers in crypto are out there are telling everybody to de-risk and get out? Oh, that's it. You know, 69K Bitcoin, Vanguard doesn't want it. So uh, I guess we should all go home. Guess they're all forgetting about all these people with their cell phones and the green button on Coinbase and Coinbase borrowing a billion dollars either to get a bigger computer or to buy a Bitcoin miner. Guess no one's talking about that. Plus, I think anybody who wants to fade a monster trend like this into a solar eclipse, I don't know. I don't want to say they're crazy. I respect everybody's work, but people, the trend is our friend. You lived through the bear market or you missed crypto or, or you didn't know about it or whatever. You're going to get here and get off the train for the sake of getting off the train. Now, if you got to buy a computer, take profits, go buy a computer. That's different, right? But let's not get off the train and let's not say, oh yeah, well, this coin can't rally. Oh yeah, that's not going to happen. Wrong. You know what? It's all going to happen. It's all going to happen. And when they're, when, when I'm on doing six street crypto, which is the podcast in the Patreon group, when I'm doing six street crypto and there's a crowd kind of creeping over my shoulder. Hey, what's this guy doing? Is he talking about crypto? Okay. Yeah. Then you get off the train. We're not even close. You got everybody on Twitter telling you to get out. Nonsense. Not doing it. Absolutely not doing it. Right. Everybody has messed up. I messed up in legacy a couple times for years. Trust me. Okay. News. Let's rock this. Okay. So here's our friend at Vanguard saying that, you know, a mutual fund company is not offering the spot Bitcoin ETF because it doesn't belong in long term portfolios. Now, what does this represent? This represents a large number of people who are going to have to figure out how to get into Bitcoin on their own. Now, that said, Vanguard is a massive company. It's kind of like this gigantic mutual fund company that tries to also be Charles Schwab, but doesn't have the customer service. So let's take a look at the guy who is like, I don't know, this guy's 
definitely in the top three smartest Bond guys, period, end of story. Let's take a look at what he's saying about Vanguard. He says, he says some perspective. If BlackRock is the 800-pound 800, 800 gorilla in ETFs, Vanguard is the 850-pound gorilla, and that's true. As of March 15th, $2.84 trillion in ETF assets, okay? Vanguard, $2.85, $2.58 trillion in assets, okay? Inflows in all of their ETFs was $29 billion. Just to, just to let you know how big Vanguard is. So $29 billion last week into just Vanguard's ETFs. This also tells you how much capital is out there somewhere available to find Bitcoin. Okay. Vanguard is not publicly owned. The CEO is effectively the spokesman for the 30 million fund holders. So Vanguard in itself is a giant fund. And apparently 30 million fund holders are telling him that they're not interested in Bitcoin. <gasps> hmm. Really? Wow. That means we got 30,000, thir excuse me, 30 million people who are going to buy Bitcoin over a hundred K. That's what this means. Now, Jim's basically saying, Hey, everybody calm down. It doesn't mean it's going up forever just because an institution is involved. So he's adjusting everybody's expectations about not doing Bitcoin is the end of this guy from Vanguard. He's just retiring. However, my counterpoint to that is you got 30 million people, 30 million fund owners that are going to need to buy at some point. And you know what? It doesn't have to be Bitcoin. This was when I was like, you know what? Maybe, maybe, just maybe, this guy says, hey, you know what? For us, it's not Bitcoin. It doesn't belong in long-term portfolios. I'm like, hmm, gee, if this guy doesn't want to buy Bitcoin, I wonder what else he doesn't want to buy. I wonder what else out there is under-owned. And I consulted with a friend and that's where we were like, hey, you know, maybe we got to look at XRP, Chainlink and Cardano because, you know, the boomer crowd doesn't appear to want to do crypto. Here's a dude with 2,500 followers. I, I can't believe anybody could say it better. As soon as the market bottomed, he goes, 60K bear posting has disappeared. So crypto Twitter, as usual, you know, loved it at 72, hated it at 63. And this guy says it perfectly. Spartans, spears up. I did not grind for three years in the depths of the lows to bail at the slightest pullback when we've only marginally pumped above all-time highs for a week. Send. Listen to this. Fade all OGs saying to de-risk. They all lost touch. They are way too skittish about the pullbacks in a bull market. Guys, <laughs> love this. It's anti-alpha. All these people telling you to jump ship. You jump ship when everybody's saying it's going up forever. You never jump ship. You never sell, ever. People are wearing a lampshade on their head. They just can't believe it. We're not there yet. We're definitely not there in XRP, Chainlink, and Cardano. And I think a lot of these other altcoins, like, you know, Tau just woke up, SEI, Phantom. Some of these things have done nothing for months. And everyone's like, oh, yeah, we got to get out. No, 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 no. You got to get in. You got to, you, you, you know, you have to think. It's not 2021 where you can just buy everything. Or, or, or wait a minute, or is it? Or is it 2021? Are there 2021 parallels coming up in the chart version of the market update? I can't believe you'd go anywhere else. Don't even move. Just to tell you what can happen for long-term hodlers in crypto. Let's talk about what happened for long-term hodlers in NVIDIA. A lot of people think this is going to be a super cycle. I'm kind of hoping for a 10-year uptrend like equities. If you graduated in 2013 and took a job with NVIDIA with $400,000 in equity over four years. So in other words, you were going to get $100,000 in stock 
over, say, a five-year period of time. Just that equity would now be worth $100 million. This is not a joke. The stock 250 x in 11 years. Okay. So we have long-term price predictions available in Patreon. That's the store. Okay. This is the Patreon store. Here is long-term price predictions. We had the roadmap, okay, where people made money using pattern matches, but long-term price predictions, and I'm bringing that up because guess what? You know, when you have this, like I have some wild targets in certain coins out until 2025. Let me just ask a simple question. Where's Bitcoin and Chainlink going to be in 11 years? I mean, in 2009, at the depths, at the depths of that bear market, nobody had any idea what all this money printing would do to equities. I mean, there were guys who were bullish. There were guys who were perma long, but I don't think anybody saw like Nvidia going to two trillion or having you know seven stocks worth over two trillion. Nobody saw that. Nobody. So just in case you think, oh yeah, oh God, it went down. I I got to get out. Don't do it. Don't. Like if, if you got to get out, make them force you out. Don't just say, oh, wow, this is scary. I'm getting out. And if you did, well, then, then just simply, it happens. It will happen to everybody. It almost happened to me. Shake it off. Hey, I heard something in a YouTube comment. Some super smart person had a really interesting theory. Here we have 36% of adults have more credit card debt than money in the bank. Also, the average household owns 8,000 in debt. As rates rise, the pain of this debt is getting even worse. Now, the Federal Reserve, I'm sure, knows this. And you know who else knows this? Larry Fink, the head of BlackRock. Now, here's what the guy on YouTube said. This is, this is shocking. He says, what would happen if Larry and BlackRock launched all the Bitcoin ETFs, hoovered up the Bitcoin, only to have Powell pull the trigger on a rate cut to try to get it done as far away from the election as he could, just as all the Bitcoin was hoovered up. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, like kind of a mini, like, I don't know, sort of like a, 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 a C word theory. Like what, what happens if they're hoovering up the Bitcoin, right? They're hoovering up the Bitcoin and then the Fed has to cut rates. I mean, the inflation number was a little hot. I get it. But can you imagine? Like this Fed meeting that's coming up, I think they may rally it starting. Like I think they can start rallying altcoins now, even if Bitcoin sits still, especially the ones that haven't moved yet. But Powell's going to step right up to the podium and he's going to open his mouth and it's going to go straight up. Because at some point he has to acknowledge this. He has to, right? And when he does... People are going to go, yeah, remember two weeks ago when we were selling crypto? Why, why were we selling again? Oh, yeah, because of the, the you know, yeah, because it's bad at the grocery store. Well, the Fed can't stop the grocery store, but the Fed can help these people who are getting plowed under with interest rates on homes, cars, and credit cards. Like, seriously, like the, the Fed has actually got to help people. The grocery store is the grocery store. They can't stop food inflation. MicroStrategy announcing pricing for convertible senior notes. In other words, Michael Saylor getting ready to buy something. Is he going to buy more Bitcoin? That stands to reason. Or is he going to buy a company that makes Bitcoin like a miner? What do you think these guys just, I mean, it doesn't matter whether that's right or it's something. What do you think these guys are going to do with all this money? What do you think they're going to do with it? Like El Salvador is like, I'm going to buy a Bitcoin every day. We'll buy one every day until we can't afford it anymore. Just going to just, we're just going to go to ramming speed. How, I mean, even if Bitcoin goes into a range, how, how does crypto stay down uh, under these conditions? Okay. Uh, a popular figure uh, who used to serve his country 
notes in a tweet that if we make an effort to reconstruct the CPI from the 70s, which would have had an inflation peak last year around 18%. So if you measure inflation by the way they used to measure it, it was 18%, okay? Last summer's inflation was in reality worse than the 1970s, according to a former president's talk, top economic advisor, worse than the 70s. I, I was a young kid in the 70s. A lot of people make the 70s into a romantic era because of things like disco and the clothing. And there was nothing romantic about it. And you know what? When he said it was worse than the 70s, even though I was only a little kid, you know what? He was right. This is way worse than the 70s because it feels like you're erasing an entire class of people who, contrary to what the boomers think, are in meme coins going wild, right? It's not a casino in there. I mean, it is, but it's also a rebellion. It's like, hey, man, I'm going to go get me some cartoon money. I'm going to go make me some money. That's some good old-fashioned American know-how capitalism. I don't care how silly anybody thinks it is. What, they're doing $3.5 billion a day on Solana? What's that about? It's about young people experiencing the 1970s and going, you know what? I'm not doing this. And then you may be able to jump into the technology version of the market and start selectively finding things that are going to explode, which is what the Patreon group is all about. We got watch lists for AI. We got a meme coin watch list. We came out with a layer two watch list. We have watch lists that the customers come up with called kitchen table. People are looking for a solution and they're looking for it in crypto. So this whole thing that you need to de-risk, yeah, you need to manage risk, but you don't get off the train for the sake of getting off the train. If anything, you get on the train and be like, hey, what hasn't rallied? Well, the answer is XRP and Chainlink and Cardano. I mean, Chainlink has done well, but Chainlink can't stay above 20. And I'm just kind of wondering if Chainlink can go to 30 quickly. Like you got to ask yourself, I mean, just, just play a theoretical analyst game with me for just a second. What kind of FOMO would you have in this market if XRP and Cardano took out a dollar? Because, I mean, you got to think the whole market's going with it, right? XRP at a dollar, Cardano at a dollar, and Chainlink at 30 by the halving. Who's saying that? Nobody. That's why I'm saying it. Think about it. Even if that's not right, think about what would happen if there were three big coins that came out of nowhere. Phantom could be one. Stay tuned. I got the charts and I got the charts on all those altcoins just in case you think this is another appeal to crypto YouTube. Bond traders surrender to higher for longer rate reality from the Fed. Boy, do I love the media, right? Three months ago, it was, oh my God, we're pricing in a Fed rate cut every two days for the entire year. That was October. Now it's, oh, well, you know, I guess they're not going to cut rates after all. Oh, well, let me, just, let me just get that towel and throw in that towel and treasury yields are going up and bonds are going down and I give up. Watch. You know, wa watch Powell come out and be super dovish. You can say, yeah, we're really not happy with the grocery store, but people are going to need our help eventually and we're not happy with the banks. And don't be surprised if there was a bank event around the Fed meeting because there kind of always is. They, they need an excuse. Whether they create the excuse or the excuse creates itself. Or, you know, Larry and Jerome had lunch and decided that this is how it was going to be. Meanwhile, bond traders have given up on the Fed cutting rates. And I think that's exactly what you should be talking about because the San Francisco Four Seasons Hotel is $3 million late and foreclosure looms right? You know who I feel sorry for in this particular case? How about everybody that works at the Four Seasons Hotel or the people that know them 
you don't think those people are looking at the financial system and going, you know what? Enough, right? I mean, how many of these things have to happen before people go, you know what? I'm gonna go get me some mug. I'm gonna get in there. I'm gonna make something happen. Like these people may get hosed. This stuff may go down, whatever. What? Why are we not giving people the benefit of the doubt? Is the Solana casino crazy? Is there excess? Does excess eventually get purged? Sure. But why are we doing that exactly in front of the Bitcoin having? Like I said, in some of the six street crypto videos in Patreon, where you should be going after the stream. Why would you put up with the entire bear market? Why would you be in the bear market? Or why would you even be in last year's rally and go, yeah, you know what? 30 days from the halving, I'm packing it up. I'm leaving. I'm done. I Oh, yeah. Big real estate in San Francisco credit card. Yeah, yeah, whatever. I'm leaving. People, this is it. This is it. This is Bitcoin in 2024. It was like the dollar in 1914, okay? While taking from those who choose to lever up or hold a debt-laden money, money that pre-spends its future by pulling it forward into today. Bitcoin does that the dollar or any other fiat currency can't do at this point. It increases real wealth. In other words, your cost of living is bad, right? But if you own crypto and crypto rallies, you have more money. And when you go to the store, it's almost like prices went down. Prices didn't go down. You just have more money. That means, you know, real income or real wages or real wealth has gone up. So remember this whole Oh, is crypto a hedge against inflation? I talked about this on Charlie Shrem's podcast in 2021. Turned out to be really good. It actually aged very well. But no one is talking about that. Like, how are you keeping up at the grocery store? People are like, oh, yeah, this meme coin thing's stupid. No, it's not. It's not stupid. Especially since they're going to spread it out. They're going from dogs to cats to culture, right? I mean, what's next? Music, fashion, pro wrestling politics, you name it. One of them's going to catch on, right? Why is innovation a bad thing? It's not. It's not. Meanwhile, back at the crypto ranch, the future of money and the future of tech, and everyone's getting off the train 30 days before the Bitcoin halving. Crazy. Bitcoin traders eye 60K price support as huge futures gap opens. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Futures gap and options expiration. Everyone thinks it's going to 60K. Please, right? Like I said, everybody thought it was going to 60K on Friday. Today, everybody thought it was going to 80. And the reality is you have to just sit and think of where we were in crypto six months ago, three months ago, and where we are now and find something that makes sense that hasn't moved or buy the dip in something that they just destroyed, like some of these meme coins, okay? Bitcoin buying advised as the US enters the looting the treasury phase. Hmm, US national debt since 2000, people are afraid, people are afraid of wealth, like someone taking your money, let's put it that way. Somebody coming in and saying, you know what? Our money is our money and your money is our money. Let's, um, let's put this tweet up from a super cheery guy, Ray Dalio, who pretty much called all of this all the way around from geopolitical conflict to problems with debt. And, you know, he has this archetypical cycle where, you know, you have a new world order Everything is fine. And then you have the decline of the country that is the empire, right? And, you know, he says that a big country we all are familiar with is somewhere around here. And what's next after that is a problem with the currency. Now, we can talk about, all, you know, this sells books. This sells all kinds of stuff talking about the negative aspects of this. 
which I'm not going to do on social media. However, however, why is nobody talking about the fact that if you have a debt crisis, right, the value of the currency has to fall. And who says the value of the currency, any currency, paper currency, can't fall as Bitcoin and Ethereum? Oop, did I just drop a hint there? What happens if paper currencies fall because they fall or get devalued versus crypto versus other forms of money? Like how did NVIDIA go from 1 trillion to 2 trillion? Well, because of AI and because a dollar in stocks is better than a dollar in the bank. Okay. Let's see who else is here. We have Ocho. Welcome. Ocho. Liking the Patreon group. I'm actually self-producing tonight. Flying Tiger wants me to take a look at Gala. You know what? Don't let me forget because guess what? Why is no one talking about gaming in the metaverse? Why is everyone talking about getting off the train before some of these sectors have even like woken up at all? Like, oh yeah. Okay. Market went down 20%. Cycle's over. Stop it. Please stop it. Okay. Ave Medina is here. Welcome a big Patreon contributor. Okay. Cathargo talking about commercial real estate problems. Yes. Joey says XRP time is here. Actually, I, I think it is. I, I'm kind of dug in on that. I'm okay with it. Right. You know, as the guy who taught me how to trade used to say, you know, if I'm wrong, I'll lose money. <laughs> Robert says, yes. And you know what? This is what saved us. The Yankees were great in the seventies. Yes, they were. I can remember watching Reggie in front of a black and white TV. That was, you know what? That was a cultural phenomenon that told us what was possible when a guy hits three home runs in one game. Okay. PowerPoint. Your market update, eye-popping, shocking PowerPoint presentation showing off exactly what is in the Patreon, giving you some simple reasons to FOMO in, get a $15 a month membership, and buy on top of that the $27 long-term price prediction report. Other private groups are charging you $150 a month. I am not because I want you, like Kim, to get a new car and other people to be able to quit their J job. Now, here is the not so stylish version of our QR code for Patreon. Please come check it out. Another public service announcement that my YouTube channel, which me and the Eagle King have been digging, digging, digging in the dirt, trying to get somewhere, is rapidly approaching 10,000 followers because everything I say on a short video seems to go quasi viral. And I even looked at the statistics and we have people between the ages of 18 and 25 watching the short videos. So if you're between the ages of 30 and 55, I would like to thank you for your ongoing viewership. If you're young and you're new, leave a comment. Welcome to the market update nation. Come visit us. Come be a Spartan. This graph from Benjamin Cohen is a heat map showing the number of people that came to crypto YouTube in 2021. Like here's BitBoy going from a guy in his basement to a million followers. Okay. And here's where we are now. Right. So the entire planet has not showed up yet. Everyone's getting off the train and this is where we are versus 2021. <laughs> right. In other words, the entire planet is not really having a problem at the grocery store. They're, they're not going to come to crypto. It's just a kind of a one-off. You know, we, we made an ETF and now we're done. Please. Roadmap part two. What's a roadmap? Where, where I try to map out what's going to go on from the next one to three months. The Spartans had the, the last night near the lows. They had Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Solana. Let me say it this way. You want to know when you break out with the cheesy layer eyes, laser eyes, memes? A, at the top or B, at a bottom? How about B at a bottom? That's when you get the cowboy hat. That's when you get the laser eyes out at the bottom. That's why you get good research. That's why you watch the market update. Oh my God, it's chain link. I can't believe I showed something from the long-term price prediction report, but it was too good. I couldn't control myself. 
These are drawn with basic Fibonacci, not basic. They're drawn with Fibonacci tools from TradingView. It's explained in the report, which is a video. What I want to focus on is the fact that Chainlink could go to 100, okay, by May of next year. And there's stuff going on here where back in 2022, Chainlink moved out of one of these Fibonacci circle formations and it fell apart. Like it just moved right on out and then crashed straight down. Look what we have here. We have Chainlink exiting a Fibonacci circle formation. In 2022, we went straight down. So in 2024, we should go straight up. Straight down, straight up. Why not? Why not? Why not us? This is also a public service announcement letting you know that A, there's a rounding bottom in XRP that's even bigger than I thought it was going all the way back to November of last year. And C, XRP is, I don't know, three to six months overdue <clears throat> because this blue line is part of XRP's past that should match up with its present. And in this particular case, it's funny that it doesn't. XRP is six months overdue to go to $1.50. So what's the worst thing that can happen? Uh, gee, I, I got bullish XRP at the bottom of a rounding bottom formation and it didn't do anything. So maybe it doesn't do, maybe it didn't do anything. Maybe it just continues to not do something or, or it wakes up in epic fashion. I mean, what do they need? You know, it could be a catalyst from Stellar, QNT, a payment deal, you know, something to get, something to help currencies with Latin America. But why not? I mean, this whole cycle has been defined by people going, oh, that can't move. Chainlink was moving in July. People were like, man, SEI, SUI, Aptos. Oh, I mean, they were like, I don't know, 10 cent, you know, left by the side of the road altcoins on Coinbase. No one wanted them. No one wanted them. Now, of course, you know, they 10 x They're much more attractive now. I mean, they are. But again, the time to get the stuff was when no one wanted it. When no one wanted it. Who wants XRP now? Nobody. Nobody. People think I'm nuts for talking about it. Speaking of nuts... So these blue lines, this is from the Cardano roadmap. So in the roadmap, I'm either using the bull market of 2021 or I'm using the inverse of the bear market. Okay. So it's just matching up the past with the present. Uh, you know, the people who bought the original $12 report, they did well. That's why I did the long-term price prediction report. And this is why I'm hooking you up, which is why I want you to hook me up and come in Patreon because guess what, people? If you match this thing up with Cardano, you could be here, right here, right before this thing just goes vertical. Why not? This is a weekly chart. Let's go. I mean, yeah, Cardano may trade in the range as, as, as in the past, but that doesn't mean you couldn't wake up like two days from now and have certain altcoins off to the races. Why not? Oh. This doesn't work, right? No, well, this roadmap stuff, nah. This is the inverse of the bear market in Solana. This is tracking pretty good, if you ask me. We published this to the Spartans like right around here with the 200 target. There's a guy, there's a guy I know. He, he, um, he bought Solana at 12. Um, at 120, I told him it was going to 180. He didn't say it to my face, but he thought I was crazy. Now I told them 260 minimum, and there's an outside chance that Solana could go to 400. That was kind of funny. I put this out in a short video, and then I saw a couple of tweets talking about Solana 400. Let me see if I put it in here. Oh, I didn't put it in here. Okay, well, let me tell you the story. Back in 2017, ETH broke $130. It went up, it retested 130, and then it went to 450 before it turned around and went back down again. Now, Solana is kind of a big coin. It's not like Ethereum back in the day, but then again, Ethereum didn't have a mobile phone. Ethereum didn't have back in 2017, a DEX 
where there was a casino bigger than Vegas. I mean, it's funny. If you went to people in Legacy and said, you know what? We're going to build a casino, right? An online casino that's bigger than Las Vegas. Where the little man actually has a good chance of winning. The little man can also get rugged and does a lot. Probably like multiple thousand times a day. But he's still got a better chance than he does in regular gambling. Wall Street would be like, oh my God, when is that going public? Oh my God, when can I buy the stock? Oh my God, is that available? Yeah, bro, it's available. It's called Solana. It's called Solana. So, I mean, you want to get in the way of this? You want to get off the train? Don't do it. Don't do it. Like, make this thing get so ridiculous that you're like, oh my God, this thing can't go any higher. And then it goes overshoot, overshoot, overshoot. You get three overshoots, then you can get off the train. This, this looks like a warm up to me. This looks like just unwinding the bear market. Never mind doing price discovery. Is anyone saying that about Solana in exactly that way? I don't know. Oh, look what we got here. We got a 13 bottom, a DeMarc 13 bottom on the four hour chart of Ethereum. Fresh, hot off the press, right as the market update was being done on March 17th. Hmm. Gee, Ethereum went to 4,000 and everybody was in a big hurry to get short. Now, they got gratification. It went down. They made money. Why is everyone talking about getting short? Do you know where this thing could be? The Spartans know and my Patreon, they know. The people who bought the long-term price prediction report, they know. They know how utterly ridiculous 3,500 is for Ethereum. It's ridiculous. This 13 bottom, you watch. I'm going to cut this one out. I'm going to put it up on my wall. Okay. Ethereum on a weekly basis. Here is the April 2022 high. So just to be clear, you know, because we're like all time high in Bitcoin. Oh my God, the market. Oh my God. It, people, do you realize Ethereum just unwound? All Ethereum has done is unwind the Celsius FTX collapse. That's it. That's it. We just unwound the bear market. We're like resetting Ethereum. It's not a, it's not a leveraged system-wide liquidation. We're just, we hit the reset button and they're falling over themselves to fade it. Meanwhile, it pops above the old ceiling and the ceiling becomes the floor. Wow. You mean people bought the dip when they were selling it back where it was in 2022? Selling 2022 Ethereum at 3,500. Fascinating, as Mr. Spock would say. Tactical 90 minute Bitcoin chart, a very simple corrections. If you look it up in a chart book, page 60, what do you get? You get an A, B, C correction. They call it a zigzag. So you go down, you bounce, everyone thinks it's okay. And then boom, you take out the low from that first leg down and everyone loses their mind. Everyone. And then what does it do? Oh, it just goes straight up. Now you got resistance at 69K. You got support at 65. They want to sit here and trade this range. Fine. Everyone's always like, oh, let's trade the range. I got a better idea. Why don't we catch a 90% up move? Or why don't we catch Bitcoin going to like 85K? Maybe all at once, right at the halving in April. Maybe Bitcoin's got to sit, alt's got to go, and then Bitcoin goes in two or three weeks. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Everyone's selling it, giving up. ETH, 3,900. Okay, so here we are. This is where I read the prayer of the sheepdog back in March of 2022, telling people to get out. And here we are at the same level two years later. And I'm like, get back in. Everyone's afraid. Everyone's like, oh my God, people, give me a break. Look at this DeMarc work. We're at this trend, you're supposed to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's the first part. We're now at the fifth part. So we got four more months potentially of ETH just going and going and going. Normally you were supposed to get the correction last month. Okay. So we're getting a correction this month. Let me ask you something about this dotted line drawn by the automated system. Do you, do you think Ethereum is going to close above 3,900 at the end of March, headed into the Bitcoin halving? Really? You think Ethereum is going to run away from resistance?
If I if I talk to you like uh, in October or November of last year, I say, oh yeah, ETH 3,900, uh, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks before the halving, I don't know, they're going to chicken out. Everyone's going to get out. I mean, yes, it's a legitimate chart resistance point. But in 2021, you got paid to buy it underneath resistance as long as it didn't collapse and turn around. If it just went to resistance and just sat there, Eventually, in that cycle, that became a buy, and I think we may be at that point in this cycle. Even if it chops back and forth, you know what? If it chops back and forth, that will convince more people not to get on the train. So you heard it right. If it's choppy, if it's up and down, that's to me is actually more bullish headed into the Fed meeting. Let people think it's no good. Please feel free. We will just hoover up all your crypto. We'll take it all. Thanks. Don't be one of those people. Bitcoin on a daily chart. So this looked terrible. They made it look horrible. It's breaking a moving average. You know what I learned in equities? When you're in a mega trend driven by a fundamental shift like the Bitcoin ETF and the inflation problem and people's need to take matters into their own hands, um, you figure out that when the chart breaks, you buy. I know that sounds so bizarre, but that's the way it was in equities. They would sit there. They would wait for the young chart nerd to say, oh my God, the chart's broken. And it's almost like they would call the Fed and say, okay, print 85 billion bill just got negative. The chart just broke Buy everything. Print money. This would just, it, it was like I'd had a, a balloon tied to it. Just be like, oh, uh, damn. Oh. Uh. I don't even want to tell you how many times I saw it. It's not going to happen to you. So Bitcoin, yeah, it could go to 53. That's what everybody thought yesterday. I think this DeMarc target at 78 is more likely. Note how Bitcoin did recover above this DeMarc moving average. Interesting, right? Bitcoin weekly. Okay, here's the top signal. It's not a top. It's not a top. It didn't turn around and just go lower. So these green numbers here to me would indicate if there's actually going to be a top, there will be a point to get out of this. That could be three to four weeks away. Again, DeMarc, quantitative system, asking you a simple question. Why is everyone getting off the train? Why is everyone getting off the train? Don't understand it. Solana, oh my God, a DeMarc trend. It'll start with setup phase. That's one through nine. Each one of these numbers is a set of conditions. Like the high is higher than the high two days ago. Okay. So you get one through nine and then you get a counter trend move. You get a pause. Okay. Here was wick down and come back. And here was wick up and come back down. Everyone's all shaken out, ruffled up. Everyone's freaking out. And then guess what? Boom. The countdown phase should be two more weeks. Two more weeks in Solana of possibly up only Saturday night, Saturday night fever, your last dip. Title of the last stream, Avalanche. Holy cow, same thing. Web3 infrastructure, meme coins, security tokens. I don't know, you name it. They're coming after this stuff. You know how many articles there are going, oh my God, we got to get out of these tech stocks and equities, man. There's no one left to buy. There's no one left to buy in tech stocks and equities. And you know what? In Solana, Avalanche, and Phantom, and Near, as you've seen, there's no one left to sell. Who's the seller? Who's going, oh, you know what? Avalanche at 60. Oh, yeah, take it all. Who's saying that? Nobody. There's no seller in these things that can match the buying pressure that can come in. And then you look at this DeMarc work. I mean, they were doing the pause in Avalanche two days before the nine, and they did a couple more afterwards just to shake everybody out, just to text your conviction, just to wash everybody out. Like this was an old joke at Wall Street with this guy used to go. He used to go, everybody in, everybody out, everybody back in again. That is exactly what's happening in Avalanche. SEI, a weekly chart. Okay. So remember back here at 10 cents when no one wanted it. Okay. Then it went to a dollar. Then it did nothing for three months. And this DeMarc work shows you could have seven more up weeks. Everyone's like, I missed it. Like you missed what? 
Okay, you didn't get the first 10x. You didn't see the fundamentals. Oh, whatever. Who cares? I mean, it's like, oh, yeah. Uh, you know, when I had Ethereum at 89 cents, oh, yeah, I sold it. I, I, I bought Ethereum at 10 cents and I sold it at 89 cents. And man, I thought I was smart. What happens if this thing turns into a top layer one? When this thing came out, you couldn't even get on the network. And every, everyone's packing it up and leaving. Why? Because it wicked up and came back. The candles are still green on the weekly. There's still somebody down there, right? They're like, oh, well, it opened up here, but it went all the way up. And oh, no, it came back down. Yeah, but there's still somebody down there, right? This is a market where looking at individual candlesticks has made you money. Phantom. Hello. So everyone's like, well, Phantom went up. I missed it. Did you? Okay. There's a DeMarc resistance point at a dollar. Okay. That's logical. That's, that's a super big inflection point, right? The 2022 high in Phantom in March, not the 2022 high, the March 2022 high is a dollar 68. So a 68 cent move, like a 70 cent move in a coin that's currently at 85 cents. So almost a hundred percent return. So let me ask you this. What does the world look like with Phantom at a dollar 70? Where's Avalanche? Where's Solana? Where's XRP? Where's Ethereum? Ooh, did I, did I drop that hint again? Ooh, you're going to have to get that chart with the Superman eyes. You better get in there. XRP. Yeah. I'm just not going to shut up about it. They talked about XRP for like two years. Now I've been talking about it now for about two weeks. You may have a head and shoulders bottom here with an upward sloping neckline. You might. Those can be, those are rare and they can be absurdly powerful. Now, of course, Ripple Link's got to start, stop selling this. Okay. And there has to be a fundamental catalyst or the forced selling could end and this thing could just levitate because they got to go after something liquid. I continue to believe that there could be a crypto hedge fund chase over the next four weeks that even guys like, even some of these guys like Bianco, you know, they're not they, too many people talking about BlackRock and Vanguard, although that's a huge story, right? But what happens if these crypto hedge funds have to chase these altcoins, right? Those guys had nightmares about the three months ending 2023. You had price action that was vertical because everybody got caught off guard. Those crypto hedge fund guys, right? Remember, if one guy does better, right, with meme coins, it doesn't matter whether they all hate the meme coins. They all got to get involved. And it could be the same way with this, right? This, this has got to be one of the most disliked cryptos out there. Tau, okay, an example of something that did a huge run up and then did nothing. Do you know how many coins? I mean, we got chart reports in Patreon. It take me like three hours to put together. Do you know how many coins, particularly the meme coins we have, sitting on these Fibonacci extension structures, which is what you use when something's in price discovery. It's like Tau was up 15% tonight, last night rather. And you were like, oh, I, I can't do that. I, I don't want to do that. It's up 15%. It's up too much. Well, the Fib extension structures just showed a, a, a bounce of support after a brutal stop fishing exercise. Does this look like you missed something or could this go to 960? Polka dot. Oh my God. How did the polka dot roadmap get in here? Naughty slides. <laughs> Anybody want to talk about interoperability? I, I mean, polka dot, if it's like 2021, polka dot could just simply go vertical. And polka dot is sitting right on one of these Fibonacci circle lines again. That's explained in the long-term price prediction video. And the guys who bought the roadmap a while ago, they know that I like polka dot. Bonk. Nice looking little triangle you had here. Oh, here's my Ethereum chart on Solana. I can pack it in from here and take questions. Ethereum in 2017. Okay, so Ethereum in 2017. No killer app. It was just a Bitcoin alternative. It was essentially a Vitalik meme coin. That's what Ethereum was with, with a lot of promise, obviously. So Ethereum breaks 130, comes back down, retests it. Kind of just like what Solana did. 
Then it went straight to it went straight to 412. Just like on a rope. I, why can't Solana do this? Is there a reason? Now, of course, because Ethereum was like a meme coin, it turned around and went all the way back down to 132, which, you know, at some point in late April after the solar eclipse, that is theoretically possible, which is why you better get while the getting is good. And don't give me this get off the train nonsense, right? Don't fall for any of this boomer stuff that they're telling you, oh, de-risk, take profits. Yeah, you take profits if you got to go buy something, right? Or you take profits because you're rotating from one thing to another, or you're getting a little dry powder. But this whole thing like, oh, it's excessive, get out. Oh, people, we did not live through the bear market to talk like this four weeks from the Bitcoin having. Myro, hmm, interesting. Looks like they went to the old high. They retested it, ran the stops. Uh, these structures that we've drawn in our meme coins, look at Bonk. Bonk broke out of the bottom of the triangle. What happens if Bonk comes back into the triangle and goes beyond, especially near the apex of the triangle? Do not fade this market. Don't. That's my opinion. Okay. Just a reminder. If you stayed with us this far, this is the long-term price prediction report, which I strongly recommend for all big caps. That's in the Patreon store. This is what Patreon looks like. There's the market update from tonight. And there's our AI meme coin watch list. There's the roadmap with the unspeakably bullish charts. And there is a thumbnail showing what our customers are interested in. We definitely appreciate any support you could throw our way. Kimmy needs a new car. If you do too, okay. Crypto Crazy says, just getting going. Low chase. No quitting. No quitting. No way. Okay. I know Rudy is, is like ready to explode because I haven't done VRA yet. So let's hook Rudy up and get it done. Okay, VRA. Okay, here is VRA weekly. Notice this big fib speed resistance structure. These are diagonal lines drawn by connecting a high and a low. Notice 0.0118. VRA is kind of battling out between the bulls and the bears. How do we know that this isn't a breakout, a nasty return move, and if they can actually hold it here? Because they've been banging on this now for three weeks. If this holds, it can get loose. And oh, look, anybody remember the bigger the base, the higher in the space? Huh, look at this. VRA was in a base from May of 2022 broke out three weeks ago and it's sitting on the old ceiling is now the floor. And that is all you need. Kim says she gets beat up every time she tries to do meme coins. Okay. Well, meme coins are unbelievable, right? Um, I, I think that what's working in meme coins. Okay. Is, You've got to be sort of an unbelievable contrarian, right? What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to draw these support points using FIB extension structures. So again, this is in Patreon. I'm trying to draw these lines. Um, I'm either using hidden pivot or I'm using Fibonacci extension. Of course, more in the group. You know, when these things break out above resistance, they pull people in and then they drop it. And then they do something like they come up and pull up short of support and then they rip it up. So this is raw animal spirits, man. This is what crypto was like. This is what Bitcoin and Ethereum were like in 2016. Okay. Um, you know, I, I can't, I, I probably should get off of it, but I can't stop liking Mog. <laughs> I, I just can't. Right. And we went from dogs to cats. Eventually they're going to get to Doge. I don't know if that's right or that's wrong, but you know, again, when they keep washing these things out to support, 
that's when I think you get involved. You, you buy these things when they're up 50%. You might be able to get another 50% the next day. Sometimes I think buying it when it looks horrible. And like you said, look at it. It's Sunday night and it's, it's down, right? This market is still going to give you dips. It's still giving you dips, right? It's not like, uh, you know, people like Saturday night were like, oh, you know, it's like in five hours, people went from this is going to zero to Bitcoin's going to 100K Monday. I, it, neither is true. The more they chop it up, the more they chop it up, the better, the better it's going to be. Right. I forgot about Gala. Okay. So let me just ask you a quick question. This is like technical analysis textbook, page 40. Why is everyone selling Gala on the 38% retracement of the whole huge move up? Why? Do you think anybody knows that this is here? That this is um, 0 0.06. Let me just label that. I mean, I, I think Wendy O, who is like, I don't know. Her Twitter says she's a shock jock. I think she's actually an analyst in disguise. She's running a gala node, I think, and has a huge bag of this. Meanwhile, all these people, okay, let's run the stops. Excellent. Let's take it up. Okay, let's run the stops again. Oh, okay, let's take it back down tonight and run them again. And get everybody out and then just rip it back up. Do you think people know that this is here? <laughs> what is everyone doing? Look, look at this. Let's like, go to the weekly chart. They're like, oh, look, I missed Gala. I, I missed it. It's it's this huge run up. Oh, no. Dude. It, no one has traded gaming yet. No, no, as in no one's even talked about it. No one's talked about it. The, the high in this is, I, it's like 62 cents. People are like, yeah, I, I think I missed it. Really? Did you? What you missed is that this is the bigger the base, the higher in the space. <laughs> okay, David is asking me how I get things right. You know, I, this is a good question. Like, how do I get them right? Well, you know, I, I study, I work with other people. I listen to smart people, but you know what, you know how I get it right? Because I got it wrong for so many years in, in certain other things. I was just wrong. So I've seen all this before in equities. I, I've seen all of this and I, I keep arguing that no one understands what's going on here better than me. This is a fundamental shift driven by liquidity that's moving into the system. It's just like what happened in equities, except it's, it's a little different. It's not a perma fed liquidity pump. Although, you know, fed liquidity is coming. The banks are going to need it. Loches reminds everybody to hit the like button. Jam on that button. People, everybody in the stream, please. Okay. V chain. God, man, I love me from VeChain. I don't understand why VeChain didn't do all the things it could have done last time. But, hey, did somebody mention the bigger the base, the higher in the space? This is like, oh, I, I missed it. I keep saying this. I, 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 I'm just going to keep on saying it. Everyone's like, hi, I'm new to crypto. I missed it. No, dude, you didn't. You missed what? This is like a supply chain crypto. Right. And everyone's like, oh, well, here was the base. And how many times again, this goes back to individual candlesticks, like seriously, individual candlesticks. So they break out and they hammer on the top of this range once then they take it up and they're like, okay, sorry, that was a fake out. Let's hammer on the, let's hammer on the top of the range. Oh, let's do it again. I mean, this thing went straight down in 2022. 
The reason there is the saying, the bigger the base, the higher in the space, is because it's high school physics, speed, magnitude, and direction. What goes down a certain way goes back up the same way. I mean, oh, this VRA, <laughs> Rudy, sorry. This is, this is V-Chain, sorry. Same principle. What goes down one way goes back up exactly the same way. Now, do I know the fundamentals? Do I know what's going to happen? Do I know what the catalyst is going to be? Well, I knew over here that the whole system was going to get liquidated. And how about over here? It's a reverse liquidation where everyone on Coinbase hits the green button all at the same time. What happens if everyone's talking about Bitcoin and obsessing with Bitcoin and Bitcoin does eventually go up? But what happens if it's an altcoin parabolic into the halving? Starting with layer twos, who knows, right? <laughs> no, no, Tomata notes that watching us on Twitter, that AVAX is a meme coin game right now. Okay. Big Rich noting that render is moving. By the way, we have an AI watch list for the Spartans. PAL is a top idea, which for some reason they're selling at 68 cents. Why don't we timestamp 68 cents in PAL and maybe we can have a laugh about it because it came back down, retested this old high and my upside target is either 84 or $1.50. Some guys have $2. Why is every a pancakes and peanut butter is here? XRP, please, dude. I got XRP in this stream out. Like it, it's, it's insane. It's insane. Okay. T-Bone is here. Welcome. Let's go. Appreciate you being here, sir. T-Bone with the super chat. I also appreciate that. Sorry. I missed that. I got to go back and make sure I didn't miss any super chats. Anybody who does that, of course, you have my thanks and gratitude. Marathon Digital. Oops. Uh-oh. Looks like I got the Marathon Digital roadmap in here. Why is everyone selling Marathon Digital? Can't believe it. In other words, Marathon Digital, that was supposed to be the correction when I did the roadmap. And this was the correction that they gave you from 28 from, is this right? From 28 to 17 people, there is no way. Can you believe how quickly people are to give up on Bitcoin mining stocks? Oh, okay. That's it. You know, that's it. It's over. Every time they say it's over, you know, if you move this out, you know what this could be? There's a guy I know out there drawing this in a political token. And he could be right about that too, by the way. This whole thing. Now that I look at it in marathon, this could be like some kind of gigantic accumulation cone from Jesse Livermore, right? Some sort, you know, that, that's what he would say. That's when he would say things would go parabolic. Like this actually fits together perfectly because I think this is an inverse I think I took the bear market here and flipped it for the roadmap. Crazy. This is the dip you were supposed to get. And they gave you this. Now, is that annoying if you're long the stock? Uh, yeah, that's annoying. That would make me want to get out. I mean, I did this whole thing for six street crypto about people's emotions. People think that, oh my God, I feel like selling my whole position out. There's something wrong with me. No, there isn't. No, there isn't. That's what everybody feels like. You just have to catch yourself and be like, oh, okay. Well, let everyone else do that. I'm not going to do that. Because when everyone figures out that it's not going back to 60 and it's not going to 53 
And there's 30 million people at Vanguard who are going to find another way to buy Bitcoin or whatever. They may go after Ethereum. It's not what does Vanguard do as a company. It's what do their clients do when they see everyone else making money. Everyone's like, oh, it's going to negatively impact Vanguard. Hey, not necessarily because we're not taking into account the human factor of all those people. People at Vanguard aren't having a problem at the grocery store. And again, why is everyone selling this? Can you believe that you have Michael Saylor and Coinbase borrowing money in the billions and they're selling mining stocks like this? You know who's going to get a mining company? I, I would not be shocked. Like we're going to bring back 80s leveraged buyouts. Somebody's going to come in and say, you know what? I'm buying. I, I, I wouldn't be shocked if it was Goldman. I have zero information that that is just complete analyst theoretical stuff. Somebody is going to come in and buy one of these companies before one of the other big companies does it. And when they do it, when they do it, when somebody comes in and buys one of these stocks, that's going to let everybody know that the world's out of Bitcoin. So, you know, I don't understand why it goes from 30 to 19. I just know that when they tried to do the same thing to micro strategy, well, let's just look at that, right? Let's just, you know, just take a brief moment to remember. Okay. First of all, these Fibonacci extension targets, just so you know, the upside target in micro strategy is 2190. Okay. Look at this going back to individual candlesticks. Here's the Bitcoin ETF. Here is everybody going, we no longer need micro strategy. I told people about it at 300. They took it to 720 and dumped it back down to 435 before everyone went, you know, um, I think this guy is holding 1% of the total Bitcoin supply. Maybe we should buy the stock. And then the stock's going to wind up in the S&P 500. By the way, one of the ways for micro strategies to get in the S&P 500 is to turn itself into a diversified company by buying a Bitcoin miner. Again, it's just theory. No idea why everyone is selling those stocks. I don't understand it. I think it's insane. They want to sell those stocks at the bottom of a correction. In my opinion, you just take it from them. Just be like, you know what? You guys want to repeat the micro strategy mistake? Great. Excellent. I'll take it all. Thanks. This is the kind of attitude you got to have. And again, if I'm wrong, it's wrong live stream. I'm not getting off this train four weeks after that. I've been through two bear markets. You cannot believe the misery. You cannot believe it. I mean, they call it a bear market for a reason. You run into a bear, there's some like, there's a Leonardo DiCaprio about a bad encounter with a bear. They call it a bear market for a reason. I, no, I, you're not getting me off of this. You're not. No. <laughs> Somebody's liking the show tonight. I appreciate that. Again, if I, if I missed anybody on Super Chats, I appreciate you. Glad I caught T-Bone there. Okay. Happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody out there. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Okay. Okay. Megan is here. Megan, a longtime viewer says, I should have bought the dip in PAL yesterday. Okay. Listen, what's the definition of a bottom? I, it's worth saying again. What's the definition of a bottom? Where there are no buyers. There are no buyers at the bottom. That's why it's a bottom. So you know what they do? Like, and again, this is healthy, right? It just, it gets very basic. So, Powell makes the low, then it goes up, then it does a 38% retracement. So if you missed it, the 38% retracement, I mean, what, what did you miss? You missed them like violently running all the stops over here. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like you, you take these dips and they're still giving you dips, which is good, right? It, it gives the market a natural rhythm, but they still don't believe it. Now you don't want it to, nothing goes straight up and that's, that's not healthy. 
but they still don't believe it yet. They're still like, oh, it's the Fed or, oh, this is overbought or, oh, whatever. We should de-risk. Speculation is excessive. They can put a stamp on that and mail that to somebody else. I'm not doing it. I am absolutely, absolutely not doing it. Robert is always looking for new cap, new, blah, new small cap gems. So are we. So are we. Okay. Megan wants Solana to flip Ethereum. You know, once upon a time, it was in 2017, it was like ETH and XRP would like flip each other. Like when XRP would flip ETH, ETH would rally massively. And then when, you know, ETH would jump over XRP, XRP would rally massively, right? People forget what crypto can do when it goes into overdrive. This has been an orderly trend with orderly corrections so far. You want to make sure you're there in the stuff that, you know, has an obvious future, in my opinion, not investment advice, like the pals of the world like the coins on our watch list that are in Patreon for $15, right? You want to be there and then you want to be other places like Cardano or XRP or Chainlink, places where people don't think, eh, there's no trade there. Yeah, eh, whatever. Okay, there was a famous baseball player named Ty Cobb who hit 400. The reporters asked him, Mr. Cobb, how do you know where to hit the ball? He says, you hit them where they ain't. Meaning you hit them, you hit the ball where the fielders can't catch it. In crypto, you come up with ideas that other people don't have or ideas people have given up on. Okay. Aiken is asking, hey, I wonder when Matic is going to rally. Hmm. Could it be a coincidence that we're focusing on layer twos in Patreon? What happens if ETH goes and layer twos go with it? What happens if you got off the train and blew it off? Don't do it. Don't do it. Okay. That's the show for the night. We will see you in Patreon.